Hope I got a good enough signal. What's good? What's good? What's good? Y'all know what I need, man. 25 or better. Network error. Starting broadcast. Y'all bear with me now. We working on... Uh, oh, that's you. I thought that was you. Alright, we good. Alright. Looks like we're good. I already said go. Okay. First off, sorry we're late. Eight thirty was the original. Nine o'clock. You know, eight thirty. That was nine o'clock. Eight thirty. He know he wrong, man. It was nine. But because he's an elder, if he say nine o'clock, I'm gonna count it to his brain. Not a, <laughs> we said eight thirty. I've been telling y'all eight thirty. All right. So as you can see, here yeah, get your popcorn. Me and him. You got more, more people on your feed. Though. Automatic, homie. I mean, it is, but don't be, homie. Don't <laughs> just respect, respect, just, the numbers. respect the hustle, man. Just respect the hustle, man. Oh, hell no. Look at all the people listen, on Listen, listen, listen. Respect the hustle, man. The, it, you'll get there. I'm, I'm not you. I'm going to make you famous. After tonight, I'm going to make you famous. That's uh, I don't know. <laughs> Are we still famous right here? <laughs> your numbers are <laughs> My numbers. All right, listen, man. You guys saw the topic. Look at that flying across the screen. You know, that's gonna be there all day. Don't worry about it. All right, <laughs> all right you guys saw the topic tonight. Tonight's topic is MC Protocol Real. Uh, I've been getting a lot of these questions in my inbox. Um, people have been asking me different things. Some people are starting to formulate a club. Um, some people want to know shall they get in clubs. So, what better person to actually do this topic with? Then one of the greats, um, one of the most knowledgeable cats on the motorcycle set. I give him that credit, and uh, I love it. It is what it is. But um, ladies and gentlemen, my man John Bunch, good dude, um, national president of Black Sabbath, Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club. Uh, his name is Black Dragon. I don't call him Black Dragon, but you know, you gotta respect his name. So Black Dragon to you guys, it is. But um, introduce yourself, give me your credentials, and uh, tell them how long you've been doing this. Hello, I'm Black Dragon. My uh, feed is messed up. <laughs> I don't have nobody on my feed it's compared coming. to you. It's coming, man. Holy it's coming. moly, I'm so jealous. Who what? <laughs> coming, no, I'm really actually happy for you. Um, Big Shell has taught me so much um, about this. Uh, but for me, the technology is just kicking my butt. There you go, you're back. And, uh, uh, but my name is Black Dragon. I am the national president of the Mighty Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club Nation. I have been doing this for 27 years. 27. Um, I was a prospect for five years before I was ever allowed to wear the Black Sabbath colors. And... You know, I've seen a lot in, in that time because I don't know people today who could prospect for five years. So, um, um, I keep coming over here, folks, because my feed is breaking down on my we phone. People keep t uh, inboxing. So, you guys know when you go live, please do not inbox because you shut down the live feed. You really do. You oh, is that what's doing it? Yes. Yeah, so you see, you got a message in your corner over there. Wow. It shuts down the live feed. But um, 27 years in the game. 27 years in the game. Prospected for five. Prospected for that five. That had to be years. horrible. It was horrible. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible, uh, and it was horrible mostly because I wanted to be um, a Black Sabbath. Okay. And it was the biggest, baddest club in San Diego, California. Okay. And there was no club batter. It uh, was the oldest club. It had its own clubhouse, no other club had a clubhouse, so it was it was the cream of the crop, and I wanted to be a member. So I spent my whole entire five years trying to be down, and eventually they let me put on the colors. Okay. Uh, it was the proudest day of my life. Now, every motorcycle club in San Diego at the time offered me uh, Immediate entry. Yeah. <laughs> well, we all know how that game go, man. Look, if you over here with us, man, ain't no prospect. We got you. So we already know how that game goes. And it was, um, you know, why are you taking that crap from them? Yeah. And um, 
it was, um, it really, I just had made up my mind that there was a motorcycle club I wanted to be in, and the Black Sabbath was it. Mm -hmm. So I continued to work, even though the brothers didn't want me. Mm -hmm. uh, but they definitely uh, wanted my work, so I worked, cleaned up, did whatever I had to do. I think it's kind of funny because I don't know a lot of people these days that could do that. You see a lot of folks that um, they want their prospect ship over and they want it now. And you don't, you don't see a lot of folks who um, can persevere like that. I mean, the, the biggest question for me would be, is it worth it? I mean, if, if, and I tell my kids this all the time too, especially my son Albert, my oldest son. One of the questions he has is he always has issues with somewhat of, uh, I'm not going to say authority, but, you know, he always has issues with wanting things right now. One of the things I tell him is, is some patience is a virtue, number one. And it's easy to say that shit, but when you got somebody going through something and they want something, don't nobody want to hear you tell them to be patient. But one thing I tell my son is this, I tell him, I said, if I told you that at the end of your five, if you gave me five years of patience, on the first year of the sixth, on the first day of the sixth year, you will be a multi-millionaire. Would it be easier to deal with it then? Because you knew the reward automatically. If, if, if you are, if you knew the reward on the end, would it be easier to have patience then? So, um, just know that um, patience is a virtue. Everybody, John is over here with technical issues. You feel what I'm saying? Trying to get it together, man. But he'll be all right. So. To, again, tonight's topic is, is MC Protocol real? Um, again, I chose this topic tonight because it's very controversial. People have so many different questions about it. You know, where does it come from? Who made it up? Um, you know, black MCs versus white MCs. Uh, you know, what's the difference? You know, we play motorcycle club. They live motorcycle club. Um, you know. Just the whole gamut of it. So tonight we're going to try to touch on that. And again, like I said, for me, it well, was my pleasure to be able to get John to help me with this one. Well, the first thing I want to do is I want to answer your question. Uh, was it worth it? Okay. And well, I mean, um, it's obvious. <laughs> uh, it, it really kind of depends on how you look at it. who you are and what's inside of you. Okay. For me, a guy growing up with no brothers uh, and no, no. I grew up in all girls in the family, so there were no black men. There were no men to speak of. So I joined the military Why I volunteered for the submarine force, which was almost all white. Okay. So there were no numbers of black men around by which to pattern myself. And then I run into the Black Sabbath in a military town, and you had all of these strong African-American males that were powerful okay and i i was just consumed by the thought that i would get to rumble with them okay so it was definitely worth it for me to prove number one i was not that soft cat they thought i was okay and to prove number two that i could actually belong and to prove number three that i could earn the right to wear these colors okay. and no matter how many times they said i couldn't and no matter how many other MCs said, well, come join us. Uh, the fact that they told me, no, you can't be here. Well, that well, that's, that's a macho male, a black male thing anyway. When you tell a black male, no, you don't do nothing but inspire him to, to achieve yes. So, I mean, we all know how that goes. Okay. So, let's get this thing started. All right. First off, protocol. What is the true definition of protocol? We ain't going to even add the MC on it. Let's just say protocol first. I should have had my other phone so I can Google. Okay, Google, what is protocol? I like to do that too to get the correct definition of protocol. I think we must put it to that on this phone and it ain't working. It won't ruin my broadcast, so might as well use it to Google. Um, so, I have two definitions of protocol. Okay. My first definition of protocol is kind of ugly. Okay. I call protocol the seven-letter word people use when they want you to do something that they're not willing to do. Boom. What is protocol, Google? The other thing, the... the 
say what is protocol. I put it in there, Google. Did it come up? Uh, it's try. Well, you got issues tonight with your well, this is. <laughs> is this how you see how Satan works? Any other night you face this live all, all, all day, all, all over the country. All day long. But this is your first definition of protocol is something that people use against you when they want you to do something that they won't do. That or they're not willing to do. Okay. So they, they will always throw that seven letter word out at you. Right? It's almost become like a dirty word. Okay. You're not following protocol. Whatever the protocol is for yeah. whatever... Situation, whatever reason. situation, uh, circumstance, whatever, <laughs> you know, fraternity or whatever. Yeah. Um, it's a way that somebody throws something at you to catch you. You're not doing protocol. Okay. But, you know, the real definition of protocol is a group of rules or procedures or traditions or histories or all of the above that are exercised by a particular group that makes up the basis by which that group operates. Okay. I don't know what Google say. <laughs> what is protocol? This damn thing. It, on. it says it's offline. <laughs> Turn the Wi-Fi off. Turn your Wi-Fi off. You gotta try it. No, because the, the, this phone is not connected uh -huh. To sprint any longer. Okay. All right. So you gave the two definitions. One is a control. In fact, it's almost one, like one a is just to control you, and one yeah. is for real. Okay. So the for real one is is what is protocol, and protocol is those groups of uh, uh, of procedures that we all use to to do whatever it is that we're going to do. Okay. That's the real protocol. Okay. And so every organization has its so-called quote-unquote protocol. Okay. So, um, the motorcycle set has its protocol. And and there's two, piece, there's two pieces to motorcycle set protocol. That's the protocol that's in your clubhouse, in your, in your motorcycle club, and that's the protocol of the greater motorcycle set. So it's the club, okay, so it's the, it's the personal, it's the club's cl protocol and then the set protocol, basically. Right. Okay. Okay. So, when you add the MC to protocol, where is where is any of this written? Where is any of this? Like I've had people tell me or ask me, what library is it in? What are where is this wrote down at? Why do we have to uh, believe something that somebody else years ago put in place? And who was this person that said it? And why is it law? Blah 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 blah. Uh, you know, unfortunately, there's no book written on MC protocol that I know of. Yeah. I was thinking about writing one. Okay. But there's no book written on MC protocol. So, do that. Let me ask you this, though. Should there be? Yeah, I think there should be. Why? Uh, well, like, you know, there wasn't a Bible for many centuries. Is it? Uh, there was a whole bunch of texts. Mm -hmm. And because there was all these texts, it, it made for the kind of conversations we're having right now. Well, we have these collections of texts by Matthew, Mark, and Luke that mm -hmm. say this, and we have Ephesians, and yeah. we have such and such, and we have so-and-so, and who's right? So the King James cat came together, and next thing you know, you have the King James Version of the Bible. So we had a text that we could say, this is the accepted text that was inspired by God, and here we are. Okay. So um, I think that that would be a good thing, because... Protocol is different in different places. Um, it's basically the same, but you will find different flavors in different places, and there's motorcycle clubs all over the world. Okay. And so the protocol is a little bit different. It's a lot different in Atlanta than it is in San Diego. Okay. So you can do something in San Diego and bring that to Atlanta and get totally messed up. Yeah, yeah, I, and we, we've seen that. That for a perfect example, there's a lot of stuff that we do here on the East Coast that you couldn't get away with on the West Coast. It would be off with your head type shit. Right. <laughs> you bet I'm saying so. And those, and those <laughs> folks who get yonder, yeah. sometimes we smile yeah. when folks get over here and they're just so avid yeah. 
or, or, or they're just so like, you know, and you're like, man, I really wish you would take that someplace uh, else so we yeah. could watch you get Because you come here with all your aggression and your, your, your upfront attitude and it's not, this is not the place for it. And then we also know too that a lot of people travel sometimes because they have to, not because they want to. Some of y'all are going to run out here in this motherfucker, for real. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man, let me stop, man. Listen, man, this is them getting me like this, okay? <laughs> but you know, some of y'all can't go back home, so you need to knock that shit off for real, but you fuck around and get sent back home, and it's a whole different ball, okay? So, now, we've established what the definition of protocol is. Whether you agree with it or not, it's, like you said, it's a group of, a group of rules and regulations put together for a group of people to have some type of guidelines to follow on to how to govern whatever it is, the entity that they're in. When you add the motorcycle to it, it's, it's motorcycle protocol. Um, again, there is nothing written down that says exactly what is protocol or who who made it or who designed it. One of the biggest things I tell people all the time when I'm questioned about a protocol question or issue is what makes sense. You know, look at look at look at what you're doing compared to what they're saying you're supposed to be doing, and see what makes the most sense. You know what I'm saying? It's almost like it's almost like a child. You tell a child, "Don't touch that socket." You feel what I'm saying? You, you know, it's electricity in there, but you know, you saw somebody else touch it, or he saw somebody else play with it, or it was exciting, so he went and you know, until you actually put your hand in there and get your ass shocked the shit out of you. And fuck off the house electricity because we got to go reset the switch of this shit. And you get your ass whooped. Now you want to say, okay, I believe it don't touch in the socket. What well, the problem with the motorcycle set is, we're getting to the point to where we don't have that time to make those corrections. Um, on a motorcycle set, when you violate a protocol rule, depending on what rule it is, it could cost you your life and it can cost your MC their colors. Is that correct? Yeah, well, it is correct. Um, you know... There's a reason for protocol, mm -hmm. and a lot of people that don't understand the MC life, they come to it. I feel a little guilty for this, because mm -hmm. when, we, when we made the movie Biker Boys, we were trying to make a movie. We had no idea it would be the only movie. We had no idea the power it would have, mm -hmm. and we had no idea how it would explode the biker set. Mm -hmm. The biker set was really... Quiet, silent. San Diego had seven, eight motorcycle clubs. Not 50, not 60. There certainly weren't 400 motorcycle clubs in, in Atlanta. Uh, you know, all this stuff didn't exist. And what, what wasn't conveyed was that what we tried to convey. You know, you had a guy, he was bringing an up-and-coming club, well, we showed in the movie how you had to go get permission to do that. Yeah, I saw that at the council. And then he was, bet, you know, you know, doing bad things on the set, ripping people off, this, that, and the other. So we showed the outlaw club come in and and uh, have to want to deal with them. Have to deal with them. And then the old club came in and settled everything down. So we showed the respect. And what people took from the movie was. Uh, all the stuff we showed, they didn't get none of that. what they took was biker boys, we make our own rules. Yeah, because they didn't get none of that shit you did. And, and so, it, it just amazes me, one one guy went on YouTube, and I, I saw him, he was like, you know the thing that made me get in the motorcycle world was when they said, biker boys, we make our own rules. And people think that you come onto the motorcycle set with your own rules. And the the very wonderful thing about rules, although rules suck, is rules make the playing field fair for everybody. Okay. If there are rules, then there's nobody gets treated better than anyone. Nobody gets away with anything. And that, okay, that's what it's supposed to be. But we know right now, on the set that we're in, and the, and the motorcycle community that we're part of, there are those up here, and there are those down there. There are people who take the rule and stretch it this way, that way, up and down, they stretch it any kind of way they want to, but I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that don't nobody really know the rules. Well, in every society, there are going to be those people who bend the rules or make the rules work to their advantage, and then there will be the people who break the rules, okay. and some will break it from ignorance, and some will break it on purpose, 
So, you know, even the rules to get inside heaven and hell, you know, uh, you'll have people dealing at, at, at the early age. Yeah, gay, like, hey, man, but what about this? <laughs> I did this. I'm, I'm probably going to be one of them. If things ain't looking right, I'm trying to get my deal in. So, because there are folks who bend the rules, break the rules, and, and, and just disobey the rules, doesn't mean that there aren't rules. Doesn't mean that there's not rules of this game. It doesn't mean that they don't work. It doesn't mean that they don't work, and it doesn't mean that you won't follow them. Yeah. I, I see people, you know, come into this thing um, with this idea that what they see on television, people having shootouts with uh, law enforcement, not all in the city, you're in the same uh, city you're in, and you're gonna ride past me the, <laughs> the next day. <laughs> Believe, believe that it's the way you want to. I'm telling they, you right they're now. They're making secret agents disappear. Hey, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland, my man. You know you caused a whole bunch of motherfuckers <laughs> to get fucked up with this bullshit SOA, man. So when y'all see Kiefer, y'all need to tell him, hey, Kiefer, look, that was real fucked up, man, that you got us sprung on that SOA shit, and we all started believing that shit, and, and now my partner doing 25 to life for that dumb it, shit. It, 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 was a, it was amazing to me how every year, every every month, they, every week, and I watched it. You know, I was, oh, I'm, I was, I'm, I'm on it. I, got I was every, there, man. I got every episode. I ain't going to tell you no lie. And, and then I see people try to live that. But now I'm going to tell you this, too, though. Let me, let me show you how messed up in the times that we are. Facebook has become reality. Instagram has become reality. Twitter has become reality. So, Kiefer Sutherland, you know, you can blame him for SOA if you want to, but we got, it's we way more fucked up than that because right now, right now, I just posted a, you know, my, it was a blessing. I woke up the other morning. And Facebook hit me and said, hey, Sal, you just reached over 2 million views. Congratulations, blah, 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 blah. Well, I posted that. And all of a sudden, my phone started ringing. And people started saying, okay, can I get a job? Uh, let me hold some money. You know, they read $2 million instead of reading 2 million views. Well, I was reading $2 million. <laughs> I can't have a job. Hey, look here, man. Understand this. If I even got ten thousand, I would be happy. I haven't, I haven't got it yet, ladies and gentlemen. I promise you. And if I did, you would know. Because one thing about if I get anything that looked like money, y'all might well go on Ted Kennedy me right. Ted Kennedy me right now. Y'all want to assassinate me? I'm out of here, homeboy. I'm telling you right now. I'm going to show up and show out. So, back to what we're saying. The re perception is the new reality. Right. So, so um, yeah, I can tell you that. It is a hard game to make money in, in this. So you do this because you love it. And if, got money, to. if money comes, it comes. Oh my goodness, got to. Now and, and while we're here, you know we're sitting in the foyer of my man's mansion because he done wrote three books. Oh shit. So we're sitting in the foyer. Hello, hello, yeah, hello, yeah, hello. Of this nineteen Most foyers are much bigger <laughs> of this nineteen can't bedroom, touch the back wall. of this nineteen bedroom mansion because he done wrote three books. Yeah. Who are all actually good awesome books, man. Good learning tools. My my biggest thing is this, man. I wanted to just bring this to you tonight because if you're not in a motorcycle club and you're thinking about getting into a motorcycle club, if you're in a motorcycle club and you don't know, or, you know, you got people in the motorcycle club that don't care to know. Protocol is what it is. It's the history of what this thing was found, what the foundation was laid on. It's the rules and regulations that were put in place to govern the, the thing that you love, or that you think you love, or you say you love, which is called motorcycling. So, the same rules of protocol apply to him, national president, apply to me. Uh, national fuck up if y'all want to call I don't know y'all call me all kind of names they, it is what it is but the same rules apply and I try my best to live by those rules because I want to be a part of the motorcycle community the community's greatness you feel what I'm saying I, I constantly preach about love, loyalty and respect and I constantly preach about the motorcycle set Having everything you need, we 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 have everything we need within the motorcycle set, um, but a lot of it is being disrespected, overlooked, and a lot of it is because jealousy. Why would I hire Why would I hire John to publish my book or to help me write a book, knowing he gonna make 
a percentage of the money that I'm going to make, blah, blah, blah. Or why would I take my bike to so-and-so to paint it and pay him? You know, we need, we need to get out of that well, shit. Here, here's some interesting things. We need uh, to get out of that shit. When, you know, I'm always, I'm, I always crack up when we don't mind paying them for whatever. Mm -hmm. Like, we, if we want to go buy t-shirts with our club's name on it, we will pay the Asian guy to, to, to make the, well, he, $25 for the pattern, yeah. $50 for the shirt. When you got done, you got a $95 shirt on. And we won't pay the club, oh, you know what? I'm using the club's image. Let me give the MC $5. Mm -hmm. well, you, if you ask, I want everybody who buys a t-shirt and gets one made with our logo and stuff on it to just give us $5. You would have World War III in your MC because, man, all y'all think about is the money. Oh, but, but the MC needs money to grow. The MC needs money to operate. When we talk about protocol, protocol is an interesting thing. If it, you, you have so many people trying to get around it, there are three things you better know if you're going to be on the motorcycle set. One is, your MC will deal one way or another with outlaw MCs. Automatic. One percenters. Automatic. They, you know, I used to only think that, like, there was, like, this handful of them. There are outlaw MCs we run into that I've never even heard of before. Run, rocking that one percent. Well, you know, you, know you, you know why you run into them? Because I'm on the road. Because you ride the motorcycle. I, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> I like to get on. I, I had a... I had a wonderful time in Wichita, Kansas. There's this uh, uh, RC, and uh, I think it's called, oh my goodness, I can't even remember the name of it. They don't wear a back patch at all. Mm. They just, in, in uh, you know, in Europe, uh, they don't, if you're a 99% motorcycle club, you don't have a back patch. Okay. So they, they wear these things, they call them side patches. Okay. So I mean, we call them chest patches, they call them side patches. So this, this, this Wichita, Kansas motorcycle club, our riding club, uh, these guys are all walking around with the chest patch. So, but we go over there, and every darn motorcycle club in the city is there. Mm. And all these outlaw motorcycle clubs. Like, these guys are the coolest guys in the world to hang out with. Yeah. So I was like, hey, man, where's y'all's back patch? Oh, man, we, 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 ain't mess, we don't mess with that. That's, that's what we do. But don't, and they, they got the coolest club. So they recognized where they fit into and, the protocol. Yeah. You understand? And because they come in and they follow the protocol. For the RC. What they have is an incredible, profitable organization. Center that's that's getting down. That every we're an RC and every MC in town is here. Mm. All night long. They kept coming. Three, four, five. We had our annual and then went over there. Dang. So it this protocol thing is neat. So the first thing you're gonna learn is you're gonna deal with with 1% or MCs. Okay. The second thing you got to learn, because I, I very seldom see MC that 99% or the 99% are conflict. Okay. What I mostly see is you've oh. messed up and a 1% is in your behind. Okay. Now, the second thing you're going to learn is if you're not right, then the 1% is going to get you right. And that can be with the conversation. That can be with a phone call, or that can be quite painful. Mm -hmm. um, and it doesn't matter whether they're a, a white MC, a one percenter, or a black one percenter. You're going to run into them if you're not following this protocol. Now, you may get along away with it for a long time. You might be running three, four, five years. Everything is fine. Another thing people think is, I can do something in my own state. Or maybe I can't do something in my state and I'll run to another state with these colors on that ain't right. And I, I don't know if you guys know this or not, but 1% MCs talk to each other. They make phone calls. Yeah. Like, uh, is this guy really a, a one percenter up there in Ohio? No, we've never heard of him. So you, you're not going to skirt this thing. You're not going to get away from it. You're not going to get around it. And... Bottom line is, you don't have the power to change it. Mm. I, I hear a lot of folks stuff. you know what? They bleed just like we do. Uh, one of my favorites is, 
Who the fuck gonna tell me how to ride my motorcycle? Well, you can find out when they're sitting around and looking at you like you'll ride your motorcycle like this. And your chest deflates. Yeah. You realize you're alone. Yeah. Chest deflates. Let me tell you something interesting. And, and I'm going to say this. But I was in VA. And I had a conversation with a cat. And uh, I asked him. I said, well, who's the, who's the dominant here? Dominant is um, the OMC that has... That has what I can say set theirself up to be the the dominant. Dominant is the most powerful MC in the city. Period. The, that's what the dominant is. Okay. It's the most powerful one percent MC in the city. Okay. And they'll fight amongst themselves. To oh, prove I'm the dominant. You're the dominant. Yeah. And they'll argue amongst themselves. But in every area, there's one dominant. Period. And everybody knows. Maybe two dominant. dominant. Uh, Maybe two. Well, dominant, dominant means dominant. So I asked this person. So, man, who's the dominant, you know? And he's like, well, what do you mean? And this person had on some colors. And I said, well, who governs the set out here? He was like, uh, what do you, what are you really ask me? I said, well, who gives you guys permission to exist or not exist? He said, what? I wish a motherfucker would. I said, well, so you said nobody? He said, man, the only person that governs us is the CIA, FBI, NCIC, and the both. He said all the alphabet. And I said, uh, for real? He's like, man, we don't play that shit out here, man. The police, man, you, if you told a motherfucker out here or got sideways, man, they going to have your ass out here. So I just thought that was very, very interesting and very, very crazy. And again, it was just a conversation that I had, and I just, I just thought that when, was... When people start talking to me like that, I just walk away. It's just like, yeah. it's like talking to somebody that is um, in a different world, like... They're talking about Martians, and you, you know, you want to believe them. <laughs> because if there's a Martian out there, you certainly want to know it. Yeah. So you try to look a couple times, and like, you know what? There's no Martian out here. Now, I, I, I gave them the benefit of the doubt, and I looked, and I don't see a Martian. So we're going to have to go on like there's no Martians out here. And if there's a Martian, then... But I don't, I don't pay people like that no mind, because they're silly. Yeah. And God blesses fools and babies. And babies. So those guys will ride around forever and never be touched. Yeah. And then you do some of that uh, silliness, and you know better, and here you That's are. Right. with the postman. <laughs> so the, the thing I also say is um, you, can, you can win a battle against an OMC at any day. You, could, you can, they put their pants on like anybody else, and you can sure go out and shoot one. Yeah. But winning a battle is different than winning a war. All the time. That's, so that's uh, what they say. Game one. It's a seven series. It's it's a seven game series, partner. So I, I've seen a guy. You know, I've seen a guy hurt a guy in an OMC, and then the next thing you know, his whole club was off the set mm. forever. Yeah. So um, if you ride, and then if you ride the ninety nine percent lifestyle, be the ninety nine percent. Okay, let's talk about that. One percenter and nine. What's the true definition of one percent? I know it, but. Just give it to them. Well, to me, the true definition of the one percenter is they live the one percent lifestyle, which is they is, is they only believe in abiding by one percent of the law. Correct? No, no. Okay. Uh, because if that was true, they wouldn't have jobs. Period. I agree. You know, uh, uh, and many one percenters have jobs. So this idea that they only follow one percent of the laws, man, some of them guys, you would know the difference between you and I. But they have a different call to, to the code of the MC than we do. Okay. Uh, one of the codes, and, and I, I'm not a one percenter. I, I don't claim to be. It's not the lifestyle I've lived. But these are things I've seen. Um, Research. But, but uh, you know, the one percent is MC first. And for the 99 percenter, it's God, family, and job first. Yeah. So um, the one percenter is also capable of great violence. Now, many of them will tell you, no, we're not. But you just do a internet search for any club name you want and you can see the violence that they've been able to do. You do that for 99% of motorcycle clubs and you don't see it as much. You see some world star shit about a, a club fight. And the other thing is <laughs> they, they, they will typically have a nationwide structure. Yeah. Um, and and so... Well that's, that's where their power comes from. It's not... I tell people all the time if you worried about and again let me say this correctly so I don't get this messed up. But the OMC, OMCs that you know, 
are not the issue. It's the ones that you don't know, like he said, because of the nation and because of the network that they have. Um, but it's just like, you know, where I come from, come to California, we got the gangs, we got just different things of that nature. So you might live on the block with big so-and-so and whatever, but if you piss off the gang, you feel what I'm saying, it's not going to be him that you have to worry about. It's the ones that you don't know that you have to worry about. So that's almost the same with the OMC. Um, and, and again, the, the, the biggest part of this, man, is that you can question protocol all day. Only thing I tell people is when they call me, what, what makes more sense? What you're doing, the, the bullshit that you're doing, or the correction that people are trying to tell you is the correct way to do it. Uh, what, would be, what would be your aspect of how do you research protocol? Well, protocol has different flavors in different places. So if there's no book, then what you have to do is you have to ask questions. You have to use your two eyeballs and your two ears more than your one mouth. Okay. You know, your mom, grandma said, God gave me two eyeballs and two ears and two nostrils. So he would expect you to use those more. Those more. And that's, that's absolutely correct when you get on a bike set in a new place. Uh, it never hurts to ask. You find an OG MC and you sit down and you ask. Um, I'm new to the area. I'm new to the set. Um, what are things that folks do here? What, what, what are the protocols that I most need to be aware of? Uh, what, what are the rules here? If I want to come to Georgia and I want to bring my motorcycle club here, how do most motorcycle clubs come to Georgia? Yeah. And once you get that figured out through a series of questions and observations and reading, there's a lot of stuff you can find on the Internet, then you know how to approach an area. It, you know, I read a book once that said, everything I ever needed to know to get along in society, I learned in kindergarten. Yeah. And we did learn that in kindergarten. Everything from taking an apple to the teacher to standing in line, sharing, playing with the toys in the, in the, in the sandbox. I mean, all of these things set us up to be able to deal in society. And the MC is just a society. It's a, the MC set is a society of clubs mm -hmm. that get along. And what allows them to get along without killing each other? All the rules. Protocol. MC protocol. Um, how do you get your motorcycle set on the club? How do you prospect people? How do you take a person from one motorcycle club to the next? Mm -hmm. There's a protocol, and people violate that. You know, you know that it's against MC protocol to actually offer someone a position in your motorcycle club when they are in someone else's motorcycle yeah, club. Disrespect. It's not just disrespect; it's against protocol. Yeah. So if somebody says, hey, man, when you get... I know you're a king, man, but... I know you're a king, man, but... Yeah. What if you know I'm a king, Why man? Why are you even... <laughs> Why are we even... <laughs> I know you're prospecting for them. I know you're their hang around, however. You know, we know you're a good man. And I think many of us have done that. Mm. I've been guilty of that. Once you learn better, you should do better. Okay. When I've seen it backfire on me, and... Um, and so a lot of times I say everything that I'm against is everything I've probably been. Mm. But I have learned through experience how not to do those things. So uh, another thing about protocol is protocol gets better as you become experienced. Because you will make mistakes. I've made mistakes with, <laughs> with OMCs that have had me had to go stand before them okay. and, and, and find some kind of way to apologize and say I would never do it again. Okay. Then I've had my motorcycle club make mistakes that I've had to go and apologize for as a national president. Um, it's not pleasant, but it's it's that learning phase. What up, cuzzo? What up, uh, Roland? My cuzzo, uh, Roland High president of uh, Las Vegas Hog Life. You feel what I'm saying? Um, my boy, bad news, <laughs> Midnight Stars, yeah. uh, former national president, said that's why he got kicked out of kindergarten. Oh, okay. He, he, I guess he, reset. 
He wasn't. You didn't feel like playing, man. You didn't feel like when you fucked up. He wasn't playing play. with the folks. Yeah, when they say go play, you say, yeah, I don't play. So I quit, <laughs> quit school because of reset. All right, so protocol has been given to, as John said, to keep the playing field level, to give you at least a guideline or a guidance of what should be and how you should act and how you should conduct yourself and how you should be treated as well because it keeps it keeps it keeps everybody like you said on the even playing field now we can get the, the, the question is who made up protocol well protocol is like everything that happens to society like you know you think of the pioneer okay. now as a pioneer you're sitting around in the big woods in Georgia and you're like, you know what? This thing is getting too crowded. There's no more big woods. They're chopping down all the trees. I'm going west. Mm. So you 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 tell your woman, listen here. I'll be back in two years. They used to do that, yeah. you know. And uh, that woman would wait. You know, there's no male, no nothing. Yeah. No male. Okay. Not male. No male. You know my male. Because I know there was some male. You opposed. You opposed. <laughs> Anyway, you, you you strike out to your little house on the prairie. Yeah. And you get out there, you build your house out of sod, and you are a settler, and that's your... Yeah. You know, I don't curse anymore. So, that's your stuff. And you bring your wife out there, and everybody's cool. And you're doing what you want to do. Mm. But now, there's a whole bunch of other settlers out there. And now that there's settlers out there and everybody's out there and now everybody's going into town with guns and shooting up the city and shooting up bystanders, somebody says, we need a sheriff. Yeah. And a protocol is born. Protocol is born out of necessity. Here you are shooting up the town. We're working good. We're working hard here. Yeah. So now you bring a sheriff in. The sheriff says, well, you know, there'll be no guns in town. Uh, mm -hmm. We can't have that anymore. Leave your gun and on uh, your horse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And now the wife is upset because there's no school for the children. Yeah. So we need to get a teacher in here and a preacher. And so these protocols are born. Mm -hmm. These these things that that prop up society. So protocol is not made by any one person. It's more that protocol has come about as a reason, as as the as the building blocks for people to get along and constructively create. Institutions mm. and the MC is an institution. A lot of people say, "Well, it's just a hobby for me." Well, then you're in the wrong place. Hey, man! Because you, this one of the things I tell you like this: you don't have to be in an MC to ride with an What's MC. What's up, Melvin? You don't have to be, but if you're in the MC, you join the motorcycle club because you said you love to ride your motorcycle. Not because you like to ride or own a motorcycle or a wheel ride. No, that's not the reason why you joined the motorcycle club. You joined the motorcycle club because you said, I love to ride my motorcycle every day as much as I can. So I want to be around other people who have the same type of enthusiasm and same love as me. So, and some people add that I don't have any brothers or family here. So, you know, that all of those things incorporate the reason why you joined the motorcycle club. I tell people all the time, not to, real quick, I tell people all the time, you can hang around a motorcycle club all day and not wear the patch. And we're fine with that. We're not going to treat you no different, no, you know, of course you got to stand outside when we have meetings and discussions and shit like that, but you're not going to be treated different. And I tell a lot of people, especially the people that I know nowadays, I had a buddy call me the other day and say, hey, Sal, I think I'm ready to join the King of the South. And I told him, please do not ruin our friendship <laughs> by you joining the King of the South. Because I'm going to be a totally different individual once you join King of the South. Because understand this, whatever I'm doing, I expect for you to do it. As again, you know, of course, well, so you don't have a job. I can't ride like you. I understand that, but I do expect for you to ride your motorcycle as often and as much as you possibly can. My whole thing and the problem that I got with a lot of the motorcycle clubs in the set period is. People join the motorcycle, then they get busy with work and the kids and school and home and with well, my wife this and my... No, 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 no. All of that shit should have been discussed and already thought about before you join the motorcycle club. And that's why one of the things, too, I always tell people, quit telling people how long your prospecting period is. 
Because if I know that for 90 days I got to do good, six months I got to do good, or maybe even a year I got to do good, then guess what? It's just like a female that I did. If I'm trying to fuck a female, he don't curse, I do. If I'm trying to fuck a female and she tell me I got to wait seven months and be a perfect gentleman for seven months, then what you think I'm going to do? I'm going to be a perfect fucking gentleman for seven months. But on the first day of that eighth month, a perfect ethic gentleman, a perfect fucking gentleman. It's a such thing as that, trust me. <laughs> but, on that, but on the first day of the eighth month, it's time for me to get that. You run that, guess what I'm going to do? Now I'm going to turn into who I really was anyway because that's all I wanted was just to get to what, whatever it was I was trying to achieve. So if you don't tell a person what your prospecting period is, just tell them, hey man, you're going to prospect until we decide. That in turn makes a person really, really, you know, it just, it kind of adds that, is this what you really want to do type of shit to it? You feel what I'm saying? But anyway, it, it, it's the, the biggest thing is this, man, is that don't join a motorcycle club because you have a motorcycle. Don't join a motorcycle club because you got weekends off. <laughs> you feel what I'm saying? Don't join a motorcycle club because your homeboy's in a motorcycle club. And if he can be in one, I know I can. If he can be a king or he can be a black Sabbath, I know I can be one. Please stop doing that. And you friends that are allowing your friends to do that, stop doing that shit as well. Stop allowing them to do that. You stop doing it and stop letting them do it. Again, if a person is not going to commit as much as you're going to commit or dedicate as much as you're going to dedicate... Then just tell them, baby, dude, you just come hang out. Man, whenever I go ride and I call you, we, you know, and you just come ride and hang out. So Yeah, it's even deeper for me. Yeah. In that, if you are not my friend from 25 years ago, if we weren't in the Navy together, I don't even really make out of the motorcycle set friends. Mm. Uh, they really don't have a lifestyle that I have in common with them. My friends over the past maybe 15 years have all been... Motorcycles. But you know, if I haven't made you as a friend on my job and we weren't in the Navy together and we didn't grow up together, then you probably are not someone that I'm going to be... I haven't like gone around the corner and made a friend with, you know, old Bob Hickob over there. Yeah. Uh, it, this, this thing, the people, I mean, the way that I dress, the way that I hang out, the things I talk about, the places I go... You know, I haven't been to a real nightclub. Like, what? what, what? Is, what I just said that earlier. What I, is a real nightclub? If it ain't no motorcycle shit, I, I'm not even with it. I, I don't even... If it's still, like, do they still have... Yeah, they got them. Like, 25 to 30, 40 dollars money one, and all that shit. 112 club, 112. All that shit. They got all that shit. They still got all that shit. What, what, with the lines outside? Oh, when I walk up to a motorcycle club, I am a VIP. Yeah, that part. You know, I... I, I <laughs> Stand outside Who really, does that? Who does in the that? line, yeah. and I and, and I see them like I've seen them clubs where there'd be a line around the the, the door. Yeah, that I've been in motorcycle clubs twenty seven years. I roll up my feet out, my music yeah. comes. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah. I'm walking right in the front door, <laughs> and you know, I, and and then I get in free too. That doesn't hurt. I go to ten uh, parties a night or whatever. I'm not. I'm not your joker. I don't that, that. That's I kind of fun. Pain. I got so. Pain. But this idea that I would stand outside a club and wait to go to the VIP room or yeah. something. Um, when I strut into a motorcycle club, I strut in. I got my brothers around me. I am a VIP. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And people are hugging us. And you don't get to... Do you get to hug everybody when you walk in a nightclub? You better not, you better not touch a motherfucker. They're going to either holler rape or something with your motherfucker. Yeah, this is protocol. What protocol. protocol. <laughs> <laughs> the official procedure or system of rules governing affairs of state or diplomatic occasions. The original draft of diplomatic documents, especially the terms of a treaty, agreed to in a conference and signed by parties. Mm. What me. is protocol? Uh, yeah, protocol is an agreed upon format of transmitting data between two... Oh, this is for computers. Okay. Computer protocol, like internet protocol which is an agreed upon format for how we're going to do things, for how they transfer data, for how we let people in motorcycle clubs, for how we allow motorcycle clubs in an area, for how we ride down the road, for who is senior at certain places, for what you do when one motorcycle club member goes to join another motorcycle club. 
the things that that person has to do before they can come over here, like give up all their colors and all this, that, and the other. This keeps you from killing them and them from killing you. All these things. How do you talk to a property mm. in somebody else's motorcycle club? There's a procedure for that called protocol. Okay. How do you... Um, how do you discipline a member of somebody's motorcycle club that has disrespected your clubhouse? There's a protocol for that. Speaking of that, I had a conversation with a cat was saying that why do we have to back into a clubhouse? Why don't you just pull and face a clubhouse? Oh man, I you know what? I just <laughs> I just wrote something on that on the Georgia Council President uh, yeah. uh, board. Uh, I wrote something about that, and it was kind of ugly because. They were having this discussion about backing into the clubhouse. Okay. And so, um, what I wrote was, uh, and I'll paraphrase, and uh, they were laughing at me, like saying, I see you trying to write your books on our, on our page. <laughs> so, what I said was this. Um, some protocol, we just go to the extreme with. Okay. And you're trying to be a little bit bigger and badder than what you are. So, I told a story about how... It was, this, it was in December, I had a brand new prospect, and we wanted to take him riding. He had like a $60,000 motorcycle as a prospect, so we were very jealous of him. So he must be like a Harley Davidson? Like a it, it was one of them custom-built things, mm -hmm. you know, the, like when, they, when Jesse James and them were building motorcycles mm -hmm. before California shut their booties down. Mm -hmm. So they, this, this thing was incredible, you know. I would never ride, they're so small, like... They don't even ever really work. Hey, man, keep, keep going. Can with I tell you? Yeah, yeah, past the yeah, AD. So, <laughs> which I don't even like Harley Davidson, but we're not going to go there. So, as we're, as, as we're riding, we go to this, we pull up to this club, and we're the, it's their bike night, mm -hmm. and we're the only motorcycle club on. It's 18 degrees with the wind blowing at 30 knots. Okay. So, the wind chill factor is like minus 40 or something. We pull up on this thing, and we all back in, and the prospect just pulls his bike up. He's cold. He just pulls his bike up, and this cat comes running out this club, furious, yeah. screaming and hollering. He screams up, up, up the prospect, down the prospect, and I'm just looking at him like thinking, hmm, boy, he could have. He's really screaming at the prospect there. So after he gets done screaming at the prospects, he starts screaming at the members, and by this time we got his bike turned around, and now we're inside that motorcycle club trying to, trying to warm up. We're yeah. shaking. And this guy's still mad. He comes walking up to me saying, you know, your guy pulled up facing our clubhouse. And I said, yeah, yeah, we're well, sorry about that. He goes, you can understand if I went and kicked every one of those MF and motorcycles over. No, we can't understand that. I said, no, we couldn't understand that at all. As a matter of fact, the best thing to do is let us buy you a drink yeah, and get over so that we don't have something happen tonight that none of us imagined would happen when we both woke up. Yeah. And so I kind of laugh when... Folks tell him, you know, this guy was so mad that we didn't back into his place. And my thing was like, you're a 99% motorcycle club. So what the hell have you to worry about somebody pulling a face forward into your motorcycle club? I mean, really, is one person pulling up in front of your motorcycle club getting ready to shoot up your joint? Do you even have enemies like that? Yeah. I can understand if you backed into the local 1%, you, you pulled up into the local 1%, they yeah. may come out shooting. Yeah. But this, this here... Dude, what the heck are you going to do? You're going to kick somebody's motorcycle over and get yourself towed up in here. Probably your homeboys ain't even going to help you. You are doing too much. Mm. You are perpetrating a fraud. Your MC has no reason to worry about somebody pulling up in front of it, in the forward of it. There was one time I... But it's protocol. It, it's, it's, it's protocol, but is it? And you said, what is protocol? Is that protocol for you, or is that protocol for outlaws? Well, that's just a, or is that just a well, courtesy? Well, courtesy and yeah. protocol are two different things. Yeah, is that a courtesy? So, yeah. I can understand why you wouldn't pull up. And, am I really disrespecting you? Uh, because we pull up in front of the born losers all the time. Yeah, you got no choice. Uh -huh. the, the, way, the way they come out. <laughs> you ain't got no choice. You ain't got I no wish choice. you would back up in there. Yeah, Can you even gonna, back up that be, hill? You gonna be down, you know, down, down, down You gonna be, I'm a, you gonna be on my number, my number one YouTube video. You fuck so, with so you don't see them running out. Oh my God, you disrespected the clubhouse. They're just so happy to see you. Yeah. Thanks for coming by. And I think that when it comes to protocol, we should separate the idiocy from the 
Hey, man, it's 18 degrees outside with the wind blowing at 30 knots. We're so glad you're here. Period. Matter of fact, bring them motorcycles on the inside. Yeah. Everybody warm up. So, you know, protocol is that seven-letter word, because that guy probably drove there that night. Mm. That seven-letter word we use against somebody when we want them to do something or we want to front them off on Front Street, like you really got an issue that you should be so... It would have been different if all your homeboys had come running out with their guns like, Are you here? Are, are they, uh, oh, y'all ain't them? Hey, man, don't back... But you, you don't have that as an issue. So sometimes we want to put BS down on people and the guys in the name of protocol. In the, in the, in the, in the name of protocol. Yeah. And you can understand if I kicked your bike over. No. Well, that's... the What protocol was I that? I didn't even understand it if I fucked up protocol. I can't... I mean, if I totally... Broke. I wish you would put your foot on my motorcycle. Now, speaking of that, 27 years in the game, how has the set changed, man? Oh, Chiquita said, sell sell. Chiquita, what it do? <laughs> that's one of them DWKs, man, for real, she man. She's from my hometown. Oklahoma? Oklahoma City. Yeah, that's my girl, man. Love you. So, how has the set changed, man? Oh, in 27 years? The, the first thing it has done is it's gotten exponentially bigger. Okay. So, you know, you got 400 motorcycle clubs. Exponentially, for those of y'all that don't know, means a lot. It's a whole bunch of shit. As a multiplication. A lot of, yeah, times 100, you know what I'm saying? So it's gotten a lot bigger. How about that? <laughs> it's gotten huge. Whereas you would have maybe 10, 20. When I first came to Atlanta, I got here in like 2000. There wasn't all those... Well, uh, actually, um, Sweet Tea today, earlier named, it was only 10, 11 clubs in Georgia. That, I, I was she here for that. Them all, yeah. And uh, that was 16 years ago. Now there are more than, I have seen it as many as 400 in, in, in Georgia, in, in the Atlanta metro area. What We're are, not even talking about... Just period. Well, well let me add so, this to that real quick yeah. before you go any further. I tell people all the time, when they ask, how, so how do we... Deal with the overcrowding of all of the bikes, uh, all of the different bike clubs in Georgia. Like I tell them like this. If you are, which we do have what they call those fly by clubs and those local jokers or those pop-ups or whatever you want to call them, let them, to me personally, let them come and go because they're not doing nothing but they, you know, they're going to come for the summer. I call them summertime clubs or riding season clubs or whatever the fuck you want to call them. But me personally... I really, I, I I wish a rule was in place that you couldn't even host an anniversary an event or anything for like five years, you know. Because well, I don't I don't like that. You don't like that? No. And I'll tell you why. I I, I never used the word pop up. Okay. The Black Sabbath Motorcycle Club was a pop up in 1974. Nobody thought we would make it. Okay. We we were the new kids on the block. They gave us the worst annual. Okay. The day. The worst day on the calendar, which was like right, right after, the, right in the middle of rainy season. Okay. Now it's called the breakout run. Now it is the first run okay. of the year, and everybody comes down. Okay. But then it was like the worst time. And you're not a pop up club unless you're here today, gone tomorrow. Well, that's what I mean. We but if you, you but who, but who knows? No, you're not you. You, you you don't know who's a pop-up club and who's the next 43-year-old club until nah, some time. you can tell, John. No, you can't. I don't, well, I don't think you can tell. Listen. I, I can't tell. I can I can look and see that your protocol is bad. Not I, one. I can look and see that y'all are riding staggered instead of two by two. I can look and see that when you guys drive down the street, you look like a Everybody horse. Everybody can't ride two by two. You need to knock that off, man. Everybody can't man, ride two by two. Don't do that. They can't. Everybody can't ride two by two. Don't do that, man. Everybody in an MC, MC. Is that how you do it in sign language? Uh, no, that's dub. You just. That's uh, good, dub. <laughs> Everybody in an MC should be able to ride suicide. No. Can't do it. Mm, you can't ride with us, bro. I mean, I can do it. I've, I've seen you do it. I know, yeah, okay. I know I don't yeah, I've seen you out there. <laughs> but everybody can't do that. A lot of people, they just, a lot of clubs just accept. That's because the road captain's not on his job. What, uh, what, I've got what, a video what, out what for is, the road what captain. Is, listen, what real rights does a road captain have in today's MC? 
Back in the day, a road captain was the man. Period. But today, you know a the road captain is you know a, a fucking title, man. You know a road captain was going to be a president. Yeah. And I got a book coming out called Road Captain's Bible. Yeah. And I want to give the road captain back yeah. his thing. But a road captain, to me, MC means move the crowd. Okay. All right? T.C. Islam said that. Mm -hmm. okay. You don't know who that is. No. You're not from East Coast. No. You don't know that rap, that 1987 rap. Okay. But MC means that motorcycle club is moving. Okay. And the person that's responsible for that is, the is that young ass, uh, young booty <laughs> <laughs> road captain. See, I've been sitting around here. So the young road captain, chest up, who's done his homework and knows how to move that MC down the street. Mm -hmm. Now, if you are a road captain and you allow your power to be whittled away, you haven't read your bylaws, and that's your own fault. Because in a real, traditional, real live MC, the road captain is the president on when the, the MC is on the road. When you're moving. When you're moving. And that's you're doing some motorcycle and shit, meaning riding your motorcycle. The road captain is the president. I know you don't believe it, but that's the truth. He's, he's totally responsible. Are y'all taking, uh, taking calls? Is this your, is, she's got your last name. Is this your people? Which one? Tamika. Well, that's Queen. Oh, that's your wife. <laughs> I don't know my queen. <laughs> she said we taking calls. Uh, we don't have a phone to take calls on. I, both of mine are being used right now, so we don't have a phone to take calls on. But maybe we need to incorporate that one day. Maybe uh, I, we could, uh, I could pull a phone in here. Uh, are we taking calls? If you want to, it's up to you. Uh, you got a phone let me see if I can, can Yeah, let me see if I can pull a phone in here. Okay. Well, why he does that, man? Again, I just want to thank everybody for tuning in. Um, today has been a real epic day for me, man. Um, earlier, if you had, if you didn't get to see, get a chance to see that video with Miss Teresa, uh, she gave us some history for the Atlanta bike set, um, and um, really, you know, kind of clarified a few things. So, made a shout out to her. I love you, T. Golden Hawks, um, and then now I'm here with my man John Bunch. Um, and again, I, I'm doing this because this is what I love motorcycle. I love the MC set. I love what it stands for. I love what it's supposed to be. I love what um, just, the, just the hope that we can get this thing back on track. And again, I'm not saying that it's all the way off track, but we all know that some improvement is warranted and can be done. Let me see some of these comments. I know I'm way behind on comments. Man, let me see. I can ride suicide, but anybody can't ride suicide with me by Tim Kelly. Quill, what it do? Best way to ride. Uh, damn, you know, a lot of people can't hold their position. Elijah, ain't nothing like riding like that. So all you expert, all of y'all experts now on riding suicide, as he calls it. What up, my man Greg Smith, Jeff Alston, Calvin Curley. Oh, my bad. I'm trying to read these comments. Uh, they can hear me. Everybody good? Let me see. Uh, Ross, let see. Um, build protocol and enforce the traditional rules. So if everybody followed tradition, you wouldn't need protocol to enforce it. Okay. Let me see what we got. Some people just fell off. Me, man, I'm going to leave this thing alone, man. Need that road captain book. Okay. Should be illegal. Everybody can't ride. Suicide is cool until the deer run out in front of the pack. Well, then everybody's messed up. What up, Soldy Locks? He said everybody messed up. Yeah, it's not like you know, the deer run out of the pack on suicide. It's going. Well, I mean, on on, on um, staggered. What's going to be the difference? Uh oh. What you got? <laughs> you know, the technology be kicking my butt, man. This technology is so tough. Is that a rotary point? We got it. Got a rotary phone. Who, I'm old. who in the fuck does that? I just lost some subscribers. I don't know something happened. Anyway, I'm catching and messing with stuff. Should have just left it alone. But again, thank y'all for tuning in, man. Beautiful day, beautiful conversation. So uh, we're gonna get it together. Tandem is a true rider. What up with it, spicy wicey? Number. Emery L. Phil. What up with it? We trying to get it hooked up now, y'all, so we can get some call in. So, y'all just bear with us. Uh, apparently, something happened with my thing. It, it, uh, a lot of shit fell. A lot of people fell off. 
Alright. We got a few more minutes of this, then we're gonna have to um, get it together. We're trying to hook up a phone. But again, is protocol real? If you join a motorcycle club, why should protocol be that important to you? Um, if you are interested in joining a motorcycle club, protocol is something you should learn. Seek out, ask questions, to get, have that first before you even join a motorcycle club. Um, you know, we talked about a lot today, a lot, a whole lot. So, you have to rewind it. Also, I did an interview earlier today. Go back and check that out. It's on YouTube, FHO Atlanta GA. Or go back and check it out on my uh, Facebook page. But anyway, what else we got? Protocol is real. See if this works. Oh shoot! We got downtown. We don't have no speaker problem. Let's see if the. There it is. Uh oh. Turn it up. There we go. All right. So you want to take calls? Uh, let's, I don't know my number. <laughs> Dial it, uh, oh, you can I call? Let's, I'll call your wife. Okay, yeah. See, she might just put the number on the screen. Uh, who knows their home phone number? Nobody knows that. Do you really want to get this number out? Yeah. Okay. You can see how dusty this phone is. Hey, whatever <laughs> number this is just popped up, put it on the page so we can do the call ins. All right, did it pop up? Yeah. What is it? Six seven eight nine five three. Okay. What? What else? Six seven eight nine five three. What? Uh, six, seven, eight, nine, five, yeah. What? Oh, six seven eight three nine five. Get it together now. <laughs> and you? What is it, man? You don't know how to look at the phone and see the number and talk at the same time? Okay, she said she just put it on the page. I don't know it, but she said, okay, 678 <laughs> 395 I know John McDowell, I know. Okay, well, we're doing it, Carl. We're doing it right now. Bye. Okay, what, it, what's the it, phone number? 678 <laughs> Six five. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, man. What's going on? How you doing? This is Tech Nine. What's going on with your Tech Nine? <laughs> we got a line gonna be. Y'all gonna have to hold on one we'll call the time. What's your question, Nine? Hello. Yes, sir. Yeah, go ahead with your question. Okay, so what is the protocol for a support club hundred outlaw motorcycle club? Hmm. What do you mean, what is the protocol? Like, do they follow the same rules and regulations, or are they allowed to follow their own rules at the club? When you say the same rules, are you saying that the rules and regulations of the outlaw, of the 1% or of the 99%? Is that what you're saying? The one percent I think, I think what you're saying is that because you wear a support patch, do, yeah. your, do your protocol, is your protocol different? Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. So no, you're a 99 percenter, and you do 99 percent of things. Now the uh, permissions or, or or privileges that are granted to you as a result of your support patch would would be told to you by your dominant. Uh, so they may have you do something for them or something like that, which at being a 99 percenter, I wouldn't know much about, but. That would come directly from them in the form of bylaws or whatever agreement that you made with them. But if they've given you nothing like that, then you're a 99 percenter, uh, and you, are, you that, are to act accordingly, and you and you are to act accordingly. One thing that you shouldn't do is one percenter stuff. If you ain't a one percenter, uh, uh, you should always, you know, st stay clear of that. That's their business, and that's what they'll do. Are you going to have a one percenter on your show anytime soon? Uh, we try. We, I mean, I mean, this is just something, man. Me and John put together tonight. 
apparently as much needed as, as you guys are loving it. So we're probably trying to come up with this on a weekly basis. Good idea, yeah. yeah. We can do that. If one if one will come and talk. They don't normally get on these things. No, nah, no, nah, they don't. But we'll try, though. We appreciate the love. We appreciate the love, Nine. All right, Press. Thank you. Be oh, wow. It, it works. Go ahead. What up, cut What up with it? This is Gorilla Blue, Hog Life President, Las Vegas chapter. What's going on, uh, Press? Hey, Las Vegas. Hey, uh... I'm sitting here and I, I tell you, first of all, much love and respect to OG right there, man. Thank you, brother. Um, what I'm saying is, you know, my daddy's been in this shit, you know, longer than OG right there, but the vice said, when they say what is protocol to me, the vice said protocol is the vice said ten commandments. Okay. Like when you, when, you, when you decide to become a Christian or whatever, you go to church. You have to roll with the Ten Commandments or the Church Covenant that they have on the wall. So when you join the fight set, the rules and regulations is the same thing. Rules and regulations is just protocol. But my thing is this. How are... Bring a chair to set this on, John. How, how are some of these new clubs that just do what they want to do when, it, when, it, when, it, when it's supposed to be protocol? Well, how do we feel about that? Well, one of the one of the biggest things you just said, because this is what we were brought up to. One of the questions we brought up tonight. Well, the main question is, if you say it's Ten Commandments, a lot of people are questioning who wrote the Ten Commandments and who made the Ten Commandments law. When the the difference is, especially like for let's say somebody like me or you, who care, who who acknowledge, who agree, and who uh, adhere to the so-called Ten Commandments, even before we. Before we started, we already agreed to that. We don't have a problem with that. So we're not coming in, we're not coming into the motorcycle club challenging that they even are real or that they exist. Okay? The second part of your question, to answer your question, is that, um, again, what, what, what John said earlier was that all this stuff is supposed to be governed, and eventually, you know, you will have to answer to the OMC once they see it. Um... And, and, and I think that's the problem because it, it's frustrating to a person like me and even him who we see it all the time, but we're I guess we're more in the places where the bullshit go on than the OMC would be. Is that correct? Problem. Problem. So, I mean, now let me ask you this, then, to piggyback off this question. Is it our responsibility as 99 percenter when we see another 99 percenter on some bullshit or some fucked up shit to say anything, or do we just... Mind our business. So then it comes to questioning my, my brother's keeper. And when we put on these patches, I mean, is it your responsibility to stop for every biker you see on the side of the highway? Yes. Is it your responsibility to to uh, help a, a, a brother biker out? I mean, God, I have been broke down in some screwed up places. Mm. And big old huge black guy with these colors on, and there's a white biker, and not even in a club, pull over and help me out. Or... A one percent or whatever. So it is our responsibility, not to necessarily get involved, but to say, "Hey, homie, that that you're doing right there is foul. If you want to know how to do it better, I can tell you, uh, and and leave it to them. It's on them after that. But it's definitely as a biker, it is our. We are our brother's keepers. That's what we say. Yeah. And and that's the the life that we live. Hello. Can you hear us? Yeah, I heard you. And then I want to say this, like what he was saying about being broke down. Uh, you've seen me do videos of me helping people, you know, uh, being broke down because that's how I was raised. I, I pull over, I help people, I go get them gas, I do this and I do that. But my thing is this, you my cousin, you know my dad did this, I have family and the children too and stuff like that. Somebody made, made a comment that said um, everything is not protocol, and I agree with him on that, but protocol, respect should be the main protocol right there. If you respect everybody on the set and you give out respect, show yourself friendly, people will come to you too. So that's all I wanted to say, and I appreciate your show. I love y'all, man, and much love and respect. Two wheels, one love. That's how I feel. Okay. Well, we, we definitely appreciate it, and again... As a man or a woman, respect, you should have to have that in your upbringing. 
we, we realize that now a lot of people don't have it in their upbringing and a lot of it is causing a lot of, you know, fucked up shit to go on on a bike set. Um, but again, respect. If I got to teach you respect when you, in a motorcycle club, I mean, we, we, the, the, you already lost. That, that's a loss. I mean, would you just say that that's a lost situation? I mean, but we got him out there, so we do have to teach him. <laughs> yeah. So that's why we're doing this. Respect to you, uh, Hollywood Press. Respect. Yeah. Okay, y'all. Much love and respect, man. And then I just want to ask everybody on the bike set to just keep, uh, keep uh, keep the uh, second and none in prayer. You know, they just lost a brother, and yet another brother went down last night. Again, much love and respect to you, OG. Um, I like your white beard, man, but it ain't long to find. <laughs> Good, All right, love you too. Love you too, bro. I'm still in corporate America. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it like I want. Is that it? No more phone calls? No, they, they were coming in like crazy. Put the number, Put the number uh, right now. Let's see. Again, 678 678 395 6536. G, what up with it? <laughs> Bylaws. <laughs> but anyway, so. Until the phone rings again. Oh, there you go, right there. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Yes, go ahead. I thought I was calling Marcel and I'm sorry. I got yeah, you, you got it. You got it. Introduce yourself. Hello? Hello? Yes, this is Marcel. Marcel, you're on the air. Marcel, what's up, man? This is King Broke. What's going on with you, sir? Man, I just appreciate y'all doing the show. I just have to get you here the whole time. Well, we appreciate you, man, for tuning in, man. And uh, again, this is like I said, it's just something me and John been talking about doing, and we finally got a chance to put it together today. What's up, Charlie right, boy? And, uh, I need that book, man. Send me the inbox or something. Today. It's basically that book. Okay, all of his books are on Amazon.com, and we're gonna speak on that early, uh, in a few minutes. We'll put it out there, but you can get all of his books off of Amazon. Um, and I think you got a, a, your website too, is right? Is a right? But the the uh, Rope Captain's Bible's not out yet. I still got about two months on it, so I'll let y'all know when that's out. But we got the PRO's Bible, MCPRO's Bible dot com. We got Prospects Bible, Prospects Bible dot com, and we got Prospects Bible for Women, Prospects Bible for Women dot com. Okay. All right, Thank now. You much, brother. Thank you for calling. Love you, guys. Yeah, man. <laughs> What's going on, your uh, big seller, HNRC? What's going on, people? What's good with you? I just want to say thank you all for sharing this knowledge. It's so new. My name is No Special Cincinnati, Ohio. I live in Rodgers and Shoes. And what y'all saying, so much media, a lot of people missed out on this kind of information. I'm glad that y'all put that out there. Brother Bryce, I'm glad that you do the books and write the books. It is so, all this information is so needed, man. It's missed on the set. A lot of times, you know, I'm, I'm a good club. You know, I'm one of those good clubs. You may call a pop-up club. But that I feel we try to do things right. So I just want to make sure I know that you are very appreciative of what y'all do. Well, we thank you, sir. We thank you. Thank you, brother. Thank you for calling. Um. Also, if you guys got any information, um, we don't want to turn this into a party planner event. But if you got something coming up, man, is in different cities, um, we're going to try to get, like I said, me and John, we're going to try to take this thing, man, and go to a whole other level. And um, again, we thank you guys. We couldn't do it without you guys. And we really want you to know, I love it. He loves it. And that's why we're here. This is not about no money, no paycheck. This is just something we've been trying to do, and I forced him to do it tonight, too. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. So it was definitely needed. But we love you guys, and thank you. Um, and you said Cincinnati, Ohio, huh? Much love. Huh? You know some of my people up there, Sharp and Jackson, you know, Jackson, 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 Jackson. Man, come on, man. Right, listen, man. All, all them, man. All them. If it's, if it's a state, if it's a state and they got a motorcycle club, I know them for the most part. So, I mean, and John have been all over the place, too. And that's one of the things that we try to do, man, especially for me, man. I love riding. Um, inbox me some information, man, or whatever, whatnot. And, coming, and, um, and we'll get there, man. We'll, we'll try to get their support, man. But we appreciate the fact that you want to know how to do it right because that makes a difference. Trust me. Much love, brother. I appreciate you, man. Have a good night, man. You All too. Right. Good night. So you said somebody was telling me to come. Oh, you got 
Somebody was talking about? Uh, John McDowell, uh, brother from uh, uh, high school, yeah. told me uh, we missed the uh, races. You go to all that stuff. Yeah, that's my thing, man. That's my thing. You on with John and Sal, what's good? Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. What's going on, Big Sal? What's going on? All right, now, I'm not a Harley rider. That's right. Stop, yeah. stop, but stop. Kid, uh, you already know I need, right. be, I need to be hanging up immediately. No! <laughs> Get your victory, brother. Hey, but I'm going to say this. I, I enjoy your show. I enjoy everything that you're doing. I have a go away. Okay, I'm okay. I'm going to be persuaded to move over to the dark side. Hey man, listen. Man, I got a go wing outside, man. Don't do that. I got a go wing and a victory. Man, ride what you gonna ride, man. Ride what you gonna ride, man. For real. Now, now, Phil, now when you come to uh, California, you need to take a ride with Mr. Go Wing Rider. Put it like this: If you invite me, and and, and I'm telling only because I'm invited now. Anybody will tell you, Sale don't ride with nothing but artists. But if you invite me, listen. I'm finna show you this one. You ain't gonna get me to move over. But if you put a couple of cheeseburgers in your tour pack, I'll follow you wherever. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, again, man, whenever I'm out there, make sure we stay in contact, man. Our show come through and hang out with you guys for sure. All right. Now we're a bunch of old uh, uh, retired Navy guys, and we love to ride, and we'd like to get out there and see you. What you doing in the Navy, brother? What's that? What you doing in the Navy? I was an operations specialist, went over to the LDO, retired as a lieutenant commander just last year. An OS Mustang. That's right. Okay, I feel you. I was a submarine sailor. All right. All right, Bubba I, Fire control. So we did the same thing, bro. All right. All right. It's much love, man. Take care. All right. Y'all be safe out there. Bye-bye. All right. Look here, man. It's HD or nothing, but if you invite me, man. It's a victory, man. Yeah. It's victories. Yeah. You, you know? Oh, this, this all this brand loyalty thing. You know why I don't really mess with <laughs> HDs, right? Why? Because uh, in 1980. Yeah, we know back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> they wouldn't let us rock them. Yeah, we, we know back in the day. We, we back in so the day. I, New day and time, man. New day and time. Hey, let y'all ride now. Hey, man, you on the air. Go ahead. John, tell what's going on. What's hey, good? What's up? Much respect, gentlemen. Much respect for the knowledge. Thank you. I have a question for you. Go ahead. This is Dave from New York, president for F and Y Riders. Hey, man. First off, before you get started, I was in Orlando at y'all event, man. It was that was nice, man. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Much love. What's up, Press? What's going on? My question for you is this: Being in New York, you know, there's a lot of OMCs, a lot of dominance. My question to you is. A lot of times I ride, I ride solo, I ride with my guys. Protocol when passing an OMC. Oh, this is your favorite right here. This what is, would that be? This is his favorite right here. He did, we was talking about this earlier. Go on and give it to him. <laughs> you know, this is such an interesting one, and it's different in different places. So, you know, if... Huh. If, so the protocol is, mm -hmm. uh, if you're riding, your road captain would ride up to their road captain, uh, thumbs up, thumbs down, thumbs up means you pass, thumbs down means you stay behind. Okay. So, but but what do you do if you're on a six-lane highway and you're four lanes over? Okay. Is uh, that really passing them? Is, is that really passing them? Or, or what, if, um, what if you're riding by yourself in your colors and you're doing 100 and they're in a pack of 30, and they're doing 45. So I say let the situation um, determine. As long as you're not showing disrespect, you you, should, you know, you're four lanes over and doing your thing and rolling. Okay, two lanes over. Uh, two lanes over, you probably need to throw the sign. So up. if it's three lanes, they're in the far, they're in the... I'm not getting... <laughs> A certain, I'm just saying, let the situation decide. Okay. Um, a lot of times they ain't paying no attention to you, uh, and you and you call that upon yourself. One thing is for certain, you just want to show respect, and they want to see that you're showing the respect. Okay. And and um, you should, as a younger club, defer to an older club always. That even 99 percenters, if you know you're behind a 99 percent club that is older than you, 
and you're a 99 percent club, show respect. Yeah. You now, like I say, everything you learn, you need to know to be good in society. You learn in kindergarten. Gentlemen, your show is amazing. The information that's out there is very important. I appreciate your time. Shelly Zell, hope I see you again up in Orlando. Hey, man, I, trust me. We were invited there. We came down. We had a good time, man. Um, now, let me ask you this, though. I've gotten several different answers. What does FLNY really stand for? I asked. Okay, I'm going to give you a quick history. Florida, New York. Beginning, FLNY meant Florida and New York. Okay. We are said that. Because our founder was raised in New York and moved to Florida. Okay. But now, being that we are in more than one state, it's now called, and the reason for it is family loyalty okay. never yields. Yeah, there it is. Okay. I heard that too. From Florida and New York originally. Yeah. For family loyalty never yields. Okay. I like it. Okay. I got it. And that's because you guys went national, basically, right? Correct. Okay. Well, again, brother, I thank you. I had a good time. Um, like I said, and it was all the outlaws. Atlanta chapter go out there and, and check you out. Oh, you guys have got a chapter in Atlanta? Yes, sir. Well, you need to tell them they're in trouble because Big Cell ain't never seen them. Uh oh. I'm yeah. Have to make a <laughs> Black, Black Dragon hadn't seen him either. So he yeah, he, yeah, he said he hadn't seen him either. So, <laughs> all right, after a while, yeah. Atlanta, y'all need to never yield on to over to you know. Yeah. To the, we need yeah, to see y'all. Yeah, that part. Uh huh. Gentlemen, once again, respect and thank you for the knowledge. Thank you, sir. Thank you, prayers for calling in. All right. We can figure out the phone. Hey, you on air, man? It's easy, man. It's technology, man. What's going on? Hey, what's happening? What's good? Hey, gentlemen, uh, I want to commend you on what you're doing. Okay. You know, and this is the spoiler out of Washington County. Oh, yes, sir, the spoiler. Oh, okay, you know. Yeah. Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> I know some people, too, so. Hey, and you should. I know a couple people. And you should. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm going to make it my business to get your business and see both of you gentlemen down in the Man, let's make it happen. He rides now. They don't be playing. Right. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I do reviews of uh, Black Dragon. I did a few in your book. Excellent job. So, I like what you're doing. Excellent job. Thank you. As a black man, I want to commend both of you and encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Mm. And we, what we need. And we thank you. Now, y'all can find him on, uh, you can find um, this brother on um, uh, uh, YouTube. Real Riders Ride, isn't that what it is? Oh, that's okay. That's exactly, that's exactly what it is. Yeah, we know who you are, brother. Y'all check out Real Riders Ride. This guy has incredible um, um, uh, reviews on, on things uh, in the bike world. I try to do motorcycle products and whatnot. I've tried it. The motorcycle genre is very big, so there's a, a big piece of the pie for some of everybody. Mm. And I want everybody to get their piece of it. Hey man, it is what it is. I keep telling everybody we all we got, so it is what it is. That, that is sure. That is for sure. And yeah. I'm glad I got through. I'm glad I checked you guys out. I just came in from work and I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is what's going on. Let me get in on this. Well, we appreciate it, brother. We really do. Right. This guy did the first video. We're definitely going to hook up. Uh, it's just a matter of logistics and time. There it is there. We'll see you when you ride down here, bro. We might ride up to you. They, they up north, man. We got to get up there for it's cold, bro. Do they got highway roads? They got highways up there. What's that mean to me? We get up there. We got urban bike night tomorrow, which comes with the Black employees who hardly put that on, trying to get people out and show their executives exactly what... One of the... One of the... Just to help you out too, bro. One of the things I've been doing, man, a lot of the dealerships have been calling me down for the Iron Elites and stuff like that. Uh, you might want to mention it to them and, and see if they can put it together, man. Put You know, we can get all the, the numbers right and I'll be there. So, we definitely need to hook up because these employees are definitely from the inside of Harley Davidson working. Okay. And they are the ones that are trying to do some things. So, we're going to have to get them together and get them on the phone and get them Let's do it. All right. All right now. Have a good evening. All right. You too. Appreciate you. So, uh, right. 
Let's answer this question first. Okay. Hello? So, uh, uh, we were talking about passing up an outlaw MC, and the question is, so what if you don't know until you get right there beside them or have already passed them? Is that disrespect? Well, um, if, you know, if it wasn't done intentionally, sometimes you can do things unintentionally and still cause trouble. Yeah. So, I mean, if you've already passed them um, and they haven't stopped you, then you probably need to keep moving. Mm. You got it? Go ahead, you're on the air. Hey, good evening, Legends. This is uh, Moose from Kingdom Knights. How are you? My man Moose, what up with it, man? What's going on, man? Glad to be through. Glad to be through. Hey, man, I want to thank y'all for this show. This is 90% of the reason why, you know, I even have Facebook. Okay. Uh, this, this is what I love. You know, and I appreciate y'all doing this. Um, you know, we are, you know, a little, spin, a little different on tonight. We're a motorcycle ministry. Started in 2005. And, you know, we respect all protocols. Our foundation is based on MC protocols. Been cross country three, four times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just, you just, you just showed out not too long ago, Moose. I got you. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, as an as a as a who believes in MC protocol and the base, um, well, I got legends on the line. I just wanted to get you all the impression of the uh, motorcycle ministry movement that's coming along that respects MC protocol and is on the set. Um, I remember when we when I first met you, Moose, we kind of talked about that. I don't I don't see it no other kind of way. I don't see you guys as different. Um, you guys you guys respect like you say you respect the protocol and you just move as a collective group. I mean, believe it or not, this FHO is my ministry. I mean, and I think you helped me to understand that as well. So I don't think it's I don't think it's any different. I mean be, you guys got the respect. Of course you got God on your side, so I mean I don't see it I don't think it's two different things. I just think, you know, you guys are a different kind of club or a different part of the, the motorcycle community, you know, and it's lovely. Yeah, you know, and, and on my side, you know, I just try to preach the other motorcycle ministry, you know, if you're going to put something on your back, even if, it, even if it's proper, uh, just understand that you're a guest in that community and show to try to show respect and be involved. And that's one of the biggest things we try to, you know, push down to other MMs that might be coming up. You know, understand what you, what, what you have on your back, understand the, the group that you're ministering to, and understand that you're not an MC. You know, I will never, I don't think anybody will ever uh, confuse us as being an MC. But you might go to the gas station because we, we go into place. Okay. Hold on one second. Let's take what you So got. they've asked us to make sure that we announce who's calling and where they're from. Okay. This is uh, a second. Okay. First of all, can you guys hear the phone? Can you hold on one second, Moose? I think can anybody can anybody hear the phone? We got it all the way up, Jimmy. Yeah, it's all the way up. So, right. so can everybody? Can you hear the phone? Can you hear the conversation? Let me see. Somebody tell me if they can hear the conversations. Um, Floyd says no. Is that no problem? Yeah, I mean, it you looks can't. Like no problem. So everybody can't hear it. So yeah, they can hear. It. Okay, I'm saying I'm getting you on my. Yeah. Okay. So um, this is Moose from Kingdom Knights, and he's a MM, which is Motorcycle Ministry. Um, and he's heavy on the set. They do ride. They just did a world, uh, around the world trip. Um, and, uh, and it is what it is. He was asking, his question basically was, um, how do, are, are they kind of looked at different? For me, no, because they're the same thing. And one thing I will say is this too, Moose, is that one of the things I like about y'all, you know, you know how you got, you got those people that preach, but they don't live what they preach. I can honestly say that you guys, you guys are that. When I met you guys, um, you guys were that. You guys are humble. Um, you, you, you know, you're open. You're not, I mean, the whole nine yards. So I think the most important thing, as long as you guys stay what you say you are, which is a ministry, um, I, I don't see nothing wrong. I mean, I see you guys just growing and growing and getting bigger because, again, it's a different outlet for those who don't want to be like like what John was saying, the traditional MC. You got the RC, and then you got the motorcycle ministry thing. So, I mean, I think it's beautiful. What you think? I mean, um, so every like we got a tab down in um in Macon. Okay. And um, what is a tab? I think it's all things are possible. Okay. 
That's what I think it is. Okay. Um, and uh, some other, every motorcycle ministry I've ever seen has been humble guys not trying to front as MCs, but trying to give you a path to God. Yeah. And men of God are needed, whether it's in war and it's a chaplain. The Black Sabbath has a chaplain, or ha our, we, we recently uh, lost our chaplain, but um, we, we try to have a chaplain. And, um, you know, people who have a conduit to the Word of God are necessary. I'm like you. I believe that this is my ministry. Yeah. Um, in fact, it was uh, through personal pain and loss and mistreatment of a person that put me on this this path that I'm on right now. Okay. It, this was my way to atone to God for uh, some very ugly treatment that I have been responsible for. And I thought maybe if I could help his people make their lives better, and, and, and the only his people that I knew were bikers. Okay. So to make their lives better, to start explaining my 27 years and what I've seen as a as a national president and the, the problems that I've been through would help uh, God's people. So this was my ministry in the way, the best way that I could do it. So we almost walk our walk and walk our path. I don't see you guys as different. I, and I do kind of see you like a motorcycle club, if you ask me. You, tell you rocking colors, and, uh, no, not, and, and they and they beautiful, and, and, they, and, and, ride. and they ride, they and, and they ride. <laughs> so I, I see you as fellow bikers, and um, and definitely as an organization. And I see you as as men of God, and and have great love and respect for you. And I think everyone should. That's it. Moose, did we lose Moose? Moose. Alright, well, <laughs> I think for the most part, man, we've been on here long enough. What, we're going on about two hours? What are we going on about to say? One hour and 36 minutes. One hour and 36 minutes. Okay, we'll probably go another 10. See if we got any more phone calls. But, so. Any, any uh, we got any questions out here? A bunch of them. Come on, we've been getting questions all day. Can we ask any question? Yes, you can ask any question. Oh, that's it. Right. We already know what that means. You ask it and we'll try our best to answer it. Got to go do prayer. Okay. All right, cuz I love you. Uh, what else we got? I'm sorry. Where we at? Yes, yes, yes. yes. Everybody asking me, can they hear us? Uh, for I've been re newly appointed the road captain. Spider and I love it at times. I do feel like the prayers. Can't wait for the road captain book. Victories and Indians don't have the dealership network. That's right. And that's the only reason that you don't ride a victory is if you ride across country. Plus, they ain't got no fly gear, man. They got all kind of, well, no, they don't have no clothes to wear yet. They got no fly gear. Yeah, the, really, the victory gear is so sad, it's pathetic. I'm just saying, man. You got real shock clothes, for real. Plus, if you break down on the victory, Woo, you know God, that's why they don't break down. But yeah. God help you if Come they on, do. Come on, now. I've seen them on back of trailers. They don't no, you haven't seen that. Don't do that. You on the phone, man. Go ahead. Hello? Hello? Hey, what up? Oh, this, I already know who this is, man. This is that rare breed cat, man. I <laughs> Go ahead, Tick. Anyways, man. Tell everybody who he is. This big chick from Rare Breed, man. One of the true, true ground pounder. I mean, I love him, appreciate the love. What's going on, Tick? Go ahead. For the mother chapter in Los Angeles, California. Yeah. Hey, uh, I got a couple of questions, man. One is, no, I need to, I need to clarify what you say, the set. You know what I mean? When uh, I hear the set, what it means to me is the, the motorcycle community, for us as black people, what we've established for ourselves. You know what I'm saying? Okay. So when, when I'm hearing the term the set, I'm making a clear distinction between black and white. You know what I mean? I don't even know with white clubs, where they hang out at, where they party at. I don't know nothing about where uh, outlaw, outlaw motorcycle clubs hang out and party at. I don't got nothing to do with none of that. So when, the set, when I hear the set, it's us as black people, you know what I mean? Okay. So am, am I misunderstanding that or am I not? Am I got that correct? No, well, we can only speak on the black set because we, we don't, I mean, I've been invited once or twice to... Um, the uh, let's say the white bike set or the other side, but I, what we're speaking on is 
is our set, the set that we're part of. When I say we, the skin tone that we're, you know, our, our race. For the black, for the black Sabbath nation, as you know, because uh, you you know where we come from, uh, you you're out there with our mother chapter, yes, sir. And uh, I I was there when Rare Breed was formed, so y'all go way back with us. We was on the movie set Biker Boys together, so. Exactly. Yeah, I was there many a night. I got some nice checks from that. Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So what for us for the Black Sabbath Nation, we have all colors in our set. But you know, people will still say we're on the black set. You know, you got one black person in your motorcycle club, you you on the black set. So we it is what it is. This is where we are. Yeah. It's, it's, it's pretty much our thing, it's our motorcycle set. Okay. So then that leads me into the second question about becoming a new club and a dominant motorcycle club. Now see that that whole that whole conversation about the dominant motorcycle club and getting permission for I almost feel like that's beyond the black motorcycle set. You know what I mean? That's some kind of protocol. I mean, I'm no expert in that, but I'm pretty sure that's a white protocol, a 1% of thing. And it might even be a black thing. But I don't know that all these different motorcycle sets across the country have black dominant. I don't even know if the dominant, does the dominant necessarily have to be an outlaw motorcycle club? Or is it just the largest club? That's in that area. You know what I mean? So, big tick where there are no dominance, it is the largest club in that area. Uh, and, and and the Black Sabbath enjoyed that in San Diego for many decades. Um, and so, you bring up an interesting thing. And and uh, for those who didn't hear them, you know what exactly is the set and and getting permission to start your motorcycle club, and is that a black thing? And it really depends on where you are in the country, because in the East Coast, it damn sure is a black thing. And uh, you will get permission over this way, uh, or, or a blessing at least, to uh, get your motorcycle club started. But having started clubs across the entire spectrum of the United States, there are places where I have had to go to the white dominant to start my black MC. And, uh, and, and they, they definitely run it for all MCs. So just because you may be considered to be on the black set, if there's not a bunch of black MCs there, then you're on the motorcycle set and it has no colors. And you will, uh, as you start moving back and forth across the country, you will see that, especially as you get towards the east, you put an MC together. Especially when y'all came in, uh, there wasn't a whole bunch of that. But, uh, as as this motorcycle set has gotten smaller, and we moved across, and we're all moving across the country because I'm seeing breed pop up everywhere too, and it's like, um, um, yeah, you will follow those protocols as you make different areas, and that's why I say the first thing you have to do is get in that area and find out what the protocol is because I have seen black mo I've had my motorcycle club shut down uh, until we got it right uh, for the particular set that we were in. But I think I understand, too, the, the other part of your question is when you say, is that really a black thing? Because, again, what you're saying is as a black man, we're going to hold our own and we're going to be about our own business from the beginning. So having to ask somebody... Oh, I want to tell you the truth, homeboy. What I'm saying, man, is just that we as black people, man, we don't have enough black people in our That's how we are, though. That's what we do, man. We tear each other down, though. That's, that's the 
reality of the shit. So why not let motherfuckers just be? If they come out and support, they come out and support. If you don't support them, you don't support them. Whatever it is, man, just leave the black folks should leave black folks alone. That's what I I'll feel. You know what I mean? And I'm with you because I I, I, I I say the same thing too sometimes, like you know, is all of this necessary for me just to ride my motorcycle or for us as a group of brothers that love to hang with each other, for us to hang out with each other and, you know, and rock some cool shit is all of this necessary. I mean, so, but like you said, on, so the, it's, on, it's, on the West Coast, though, it's different. It's, it's just a, it's a different atmosphere. This is what we got going, though, man. Here I am chopping it up with you on the phone like I know you, but I ain't never met you a day in my life. Okay. You know what I mean? Yeah. But because of social media, because I respect what you do as a black person, because I respect what you do as a king of the South, a motorcycle owner, a motorcycle rider. Dude, we got that in common, so I don't have to, I don't have to know you. I don't necessarily have to come meet your family and all that kind of shit. But I dig you and I know you respect you. And if it ever came that time, man, come on my house. I ain't tripping, you know what I mean? Yeah. I ain't even met you. You'd be welcome around this motherfucker, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it, it's just because... We ride our mo well as far as me and you go, you know what I mean? We ride our motorcycle. We function in some different kind of circles. You know what I'm saying? I, I live in Southern California, dog. My family lives in Phoenix, Arizona, and Northern California. I ain't never had all my life, I ain't had no reason to go nowhere, nowhere else other than maybe I've seen it in a magazine or some shit. And I done been all over the country now, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna do it again. And when I get there, I ain't just going there. I get there, I got, I got people that I've made relationships with that are strong relationships, and I got people that want to make relationships with me, and I got people that call me their brothers and, and that we can relate to, and it's all built on riding our motorcycles, man. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it's respecting the protocol within my club, too, though. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's what we got going on. You know what I mean? Which might be different from what you got going on and everybody else got going on, but it's working for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we definitely, you definitely can see it too. We definitely see it working, man. You guys have, you guys have grown tremendously, man, and you guys are a big influence on the set, um, especially with everybody riding motorcycles now. I mean, it's not a day they go by that you ain't gonna look on, that you're not gonna see, go on social media and see a, and see an eagle somewhere. And somebody say, they there, yeah, and they out there. They out there, man. I mean, I like everybody out there. I like the women out there riding their motorcycles, man. I like, man, I just like, even the young people, man. We got cats running around here in their 20s, man. I was 32 when I got in the red red. I'm 48 now. But I wish, man, in my 20s and owned a Harley Davidson and, and, and have to, uh, what is presented to me now to do with a red red, you know, for me to do the rest of my life. Like you know what I mean? Or any club you in, you know, it does what you want to do, do what you want to do, man. I don't really, me personally, I don't care. You know what I mean? It was something else I wanted to say too, man. I was uh, gonna speak on something though, man. Tell me something, girl. Tell me something good, man. Hey, you know, man. Yeah, yeah. We still in Atlanta, but um, we got you. Uh, one of the questions that just came in, I want to kind of answer. Independence. Okay, somebody just asked a question, Tick. Um, do independent riders have to follow protocol? No. There it is. There. Uh, you don't wear a patch on your back. You are a non-issue. Shit. You know, before I got in the motorcycle club, I bought my bike because my homeboy had the bike, dog. He made a left turn in front of me at a red light. And I, man, my eyes got off me. I was looking at the bike. And then that motherfucker looked me dead in my eyes and smiled. That's when I realized it was somebody I knew. And I was like, damn. Bust you turn, pull over, talk to him. Two days, got a bike. Hmm. I'm just big the streets with these dudes. They want to go nowhere. But Melrose and Hollywood Boulevard, right? So I'm fucking with these cats, and that's not enough of a to start me. I thought I thought finding about the motorcycle. To tell you the truth, the motorcycle said today is nothing like it was 15 years ago. Because 15 years ago, you would have caught me dead and none of that shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. And the first time I went to a motorcycle clubhouse, it was four bikes outside, and it was me and the three dudes I came with, but it was 100 people in there partying and shit. Mm. And I swear, man, it was some of the, not to be bad mouth for no women, man, but it was some of the toughest ass women I've ever seen in my life for me to live in L.A. I ain't never seen no shit like that. I was like, man, I ain't, it's just underground, underground, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was like, the motorcycle said was some shit, you wouldn't be 
Second, please. Okay, so yeah, independence. Let's see. He said independence uh, do and should follow protocol. That's just like bringing civilians on the set. They should know the do's and don'ts. Uh, well, independence and and civilians on the set don't know the do's and don'ts. How would they? How you know? How would they? And why would they be responsible for it? You shouldn't bring a, a independent or a, or a civilian on the set and then just leave them. To, to be devoured, you should be looking after them, and you should. I think. I think. The, I think too. I think one of the things that you're saying. I think what you're saying, young blood, is that uh, an independent that's been to join a motorcycle club. Yes, he should know the rules and regulations. But a regular independent, if I, if I'm just an independent, I ride my motorcycle, and I just happen to run up into a gas station that you guys are at, or a restaurant that you guys are at. 
I could care less because I'm not even doing that. I'm doing me. You know what I'm saying? On my independent thing. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it's... If if I'm going to get into the lifestyle, then yes. But if I'm just... Well, if, if you're going to get into the lifestyle, you won't be an independent. You'll anyway, be a hang around. You'll be a hang around. So, so, no, independence, we don't even look at them. We don't notice them. We don't know anything of any... Uh, the guy wears the lone wolf patch on his back because he wants to look like a biker. And and uh, that guy will, will is following protocol because he's got a patch on and acting like us. Yeah. But uh, it's an independent. We don't do anything about him. Black Dragon, welcome to the show. Who we got here? Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay, I have a question. Go ahead, ma'am. You said this is Dub Princess, no rules, no dudes. Miss Regina. Miss Regina. Well, <laughs> go ahead, Miss Regina. My question is, what is the protocol on dudes? Is it is it uh, proper to take up dudes when you don't have a clubhouse? Yes. Ooh. Yes, it is. Because I see a lot of clubs that start up and start taking dudes. And then all of a sudden the money come up stolen. <laughs> okay, so we got we got two or three issues here, but when you talk about protocol, that that that's not protocol, that's bylaws. And that's the bylaws that that that, that would be internal protocol. And that's the bylaws that the chapter sets up. But of course, an MC without a, in my day or in in the in the day of the Black Sabbath in the seventy four when they came across you had to have a clubhouse to start a club. You you couldn't be a motorcycle club without a clubhouse. He talked to a lady today that said that very same thing. But if, you know, with 400 motorcycle clubs in the city, only 1% of them have clubs. We might have so we 15 might have clubhouses. Have, if we got that many. If, if we got that many. Maybe 15. So, uh, but if a motorcycle club wants a clubhouse, they're going to have to start taking up dues to get it. Now, this whole thing about money coming up missing... That is a function of the secretary or the treasurer not doing their job, which is to report the money during every meeting, which is how traditional MCs run. But an MC that has no rules and no dues, is that a real MC? Yeah, hey. Oh, no, no, no. Yeah, no, no, but, but we, what I, what. You know, dues is to keep your clubhouse going or to get ready to start a clubhouse. But if you don't have no intention on having a clubhouse or getting a clubhouse, why would you take a food? Oh, for many reasons. Uh, to go on runs, uh, you know, all runs are funded by the, all mandatory runs are funded by the MC. Well, where does the MC get that funding? It gets that funding from taking up dues. Keyword, all mandatory funds are to be funded by the MC, if it's mandatory. Okay. So, uh, there are other things. Um, uh, things you might want to give to charity. Uh, you got a toy run coming up. Um, your MC, although it doesn't have a clubhouse, may want to make itself a 5013C or a, or an incorporation so that individual members can't be sued. I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. Okay. Okay, I get it. Well, thank you for calling, Gene. All right. Thank you. Right. You got Black Dragon and Big Cell here. Hey, it's Gorilla Blue, man. <laughs> Tell that nigga Tick to call my phone number, man, if he really want to talk. <laughs> hey, man, bye, man. Bye. <laughs> hey, man, look at him. <laughs> Listen, this is it, man. Okay, someone here said, uh, was talking about the COC. Um, uh, <laughs> so... The thing to know is that there are a lot of organizations out there that run various sets. The COC is another uh, yeah. group that runs sets mostly in the Midwest. Houston, uh, Dallas, Texas, like and, with them. And, and Oklahoma, and that sort of thing. And, um, you know, the Confederation of Clubs is, is put together to allow your MC to ride in their area. Yeah. And you follow their rules like... In Georgia, we have the Georgia Council. Up in uh, Colorado Springs, there's another council and uh, so forth and so on. So these are all councils that are put together and either allowed to exist by outlaw MCs or actually governed by an outlaw MC. Uh, most councils are governed or, or some kind of way in association with an outlaw MC. And they, uh, they allow you to ride. Hold on. Go ahead, you're on the air. 
Hello? Hello? Yeah. All right, look, man, it's two hours, man. We, we, it's... Time. You you fading man. You got an hour drive. You got an hour drive. Yes, sir. We need to say so. We need to. We gonna sit down and chop this thing up, man. This is definitely needed. They love it. The reception was well. It looks like we need to do this. Yeah, a little we're bit more. Together, man. Good night, gentlemen. So I want everyone to get it to get my book. To listen, the Motorcycle Club PRO's Bible, MCPRO'sBible.com. The purpose of this book is to teach the PROs or the secretaries, whoever deals with the public relations of a motorcycle club. So this is a, a Little, Rock, Rock. Little Rock from Flaming Nights in D.C. Yep. His question is, how do we feel about social clubs trying to run up on MCs? Huh? Run up on them how? Social clubs trying to run up on the MC set. Oh. oh run up on the MC set. Um, actually, if you, I did a bit, um, I don't know if you saw my interview earlier, Teresa spoke on that. Social clubs were never part of the motorcycle club, originally. It was called social, what did she say they were called? Social, social something clubs. How they intermingled was, um, she kind of gave a brief definition. A female from a social club was dating somebody from a motorcycle club for money and convenient reasons. Can we borrow the clubhouse, blah, blah, blah. And then it kind of just integrated. Once they in. got in, they were there. Yeah, once they got in, they were there. But understand this. The titles describe it all. SC, RC, MC, MM. If you're not an MC, you should have no say-so with to, a, to an MC. You feel what I'm saying? And if you're an SC, then you, you, know, you should be able to govern SCs only. Like, for example, I went to a council meeting um, not too long ago where SC set on... The board to make decisions for MCs. No, you didn't. Shit me. I wish I was. I'm not going to do y'all like that, but y'all know who the you, fuck you, I'm talking you didn't about. do that. I went to a council meeting not too long ago. They didn't have no MCs participating. Shit, it was MCs. It was SCs and MCs together that were voting to allow MCs. So, so I mean, you had an SC that could say no, y'all. Yes, y'all ain't and, and, and they said no. <laughs> you know, they said no. But what I'm telling you is this: is that. Um, if we get back, if we can get back to the origin of what the MC used to be, um, and I say that based on what well, it used to be a private thing, it used to be um, uh, a brotherhood type thing, the whole nine yards, then your SCs um, can get back to what they used to be. It was it it it, it, it can all kind of work itself out, but. Right now, the way the city is, and, and don't think just this in what in DC, brother, because it's all over. Trust me, oh, yeah, yeah, it, it's, it, it has spread. SCs have, SCs have, they're fighting to wear black vests now. Even here in Georgia, at one time they were fighting to wear black vests, and they lost that fight. I think they have to wear colored vests, and I mean, it's it's, it's crazy, man. But that is something I think. Well, a lot of it has to do, and I'm just going to keep it 100, a lot of it has to do with pussy power. A lot of these cats that are in the motorcycle club, that have joined the motorcycle club, have never had, as, has, has never had or getting as much pussy as they get now. So now, here comes the social club, and I think um, my boy Gorilla Blue, Roland Hines, president of Hog Life, Las Vegas, he called them hot pocket pussy, hot pocket pussy holes, or whatever he called them. Now you got, <laughs> now you got all these women. On the set, y'all know I didn't say nothing. Yes, yeah. I'm not. I <laughs> you got all the, you got all these women on the set who have never been popular or never been as you know as attractive as they are now, and you got all these men on the motorcycle set who's never had as many females wink and and even talk to them. So it just causes that because understand this: if if the men didn't if the men didn't accept it and allow it, it wouldn't happen. Well, when they, you say they're showing up at the bike set, and they're popping up, throwing on colors, showing up at the party, but somebody's taking that $10 and letting them, them, let them in. Let or them 20 whatever it may be. Uh, but I, I got to say, I like having the girls at the party. Yeah. They liven it up. It's more than listening to y'all tell lies about riding, and y'all ain't never seen y'all on the road nowhere. <laughs> but but uh, uh, the 
the the power we let them have is amazing because you know you'll have an MC annual empty as hell and uh, you let this brand new social club there be more brothers at that 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 annual than you could ever shake a stick at. I, I think that uh, social clubs should be attached to a motorcycle club, but um, if, if they're going to attach, then they need to follow the, the then then they're not an independent organization anymore. Uh, so if I'm responsible, you know, I, I once saw that uh, we would be responsible for them, but then they they could do their own thing. Well, how am I responsible for you, you if you do your own thing? Uh, you're going to do what I say, and I'm the president, uh, and I'm over you. Uh, well, that's almost kind of like how it is today, too, though, with your kids. You're responsible for him, but if he go out and do something, I can't whoop his ass, but you can arrest him. Yeah, and <laughs> I can't whoop him, but I can be financially responsible yeah, for well, whatever they tow up. Tow up, but I, I can't, can't whoop his ass. I can't, yeah, which I'm going to whoop mine. Period, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it, it, it's just a, it's just the state that we're in right now. I don't, I mean, like, like John just said, if, if, if they're being allowed in the party and being treated on that level, then what the fuck can you do? All right, man. Thanks, Brandon. All right, brother. Let me get your book in real quick. Oh, boy. Okay. Prospects Bible. Prospectsbible.com. Um, I don't even see it over here. Prospects Bible. Prospectsbible.com. Motorcycle Club. PRO's Bible. I have a motorcycle club. PRO's course that comes out that's every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. You guys just dial 1 877 3. You do, a, you do a, a conference? Yeah, I do a conference call. I put it on my John E. Bunch the second. John E. Bunch the second is my feed, and uh, Black Dragon National President is my YouTube. And uh, every Tuesday night I give this, this course. It's free. You don't have to buy the book, you can. But the course is free, and at the end of my course, you get a certification as a public relations specialist for a motorcycle club, and you won't get that anywhere but me. But you'll know how to do things like write press releases, hold press conferences, guard the reputation of your MC, and manage the publics, and uh, fight off negative stereotypes about the MC. I'll teach you how to, to, to do everything from control the press with, with good targeted media, all sorts of things. The great things that a PRO could do that have not one damn thing to do with passing out party favors. Yes. All right, what we got? Once again, thank you for the love and respect. Oh, that's FLNY. Man, look here, we love y'all. Yeah, we, two I, hours. Guess, I guess we can. We're going to put this thing in the rest. Uh, oh, and my newest book. What you got? My newest book coming out is. Oh, uh, man, you're going to knock it off. Personal trainer abs. Y'all know, know that I lost fifty five pounds and, in the last and, uh, in the last uh, uh, four months. Mm -hmm. So I'm proud of you. this is the book written with my uh, 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 trainer and and good friend Candice Renee Bernie, and we are going to teach you guys how to get flat abs. You're going to see my abs. Listen, I want y'all to eat better. We we, we got to eat better out here. We black yeah. folks, we need to live longer. We got to eat better. <laughs> Uh, we got to get off of the stuff that causes diabetes. We got to drink alkaline water, which he does do, um, and, and we got we got to just you know. I challenge you all. Must we always have fried fish and French fries? Can we have fried fish and maybe some uh, 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 green beans or something? I like asparagus. Asparagus beers, yeah, something. Let's let's do something, black folks, to keep ourselves alive. Okay. Well, there it is, man. How do you handle a startup? Is it okay to be a female social club, but two to three have bikes? Yes, you can be a social club with bikes. With bikes, uh, but you're still just a social club. And, and until uh, you make the transition. And if your goal is to become an MC, well, if your goal is to become an MC with all female bikers, then of course you need to get five. Uh, well, you need to have uh, everybody in your bike club that has an MC, and then you petition. The council or wherever you are, and say, "Hey, uh, and, and it's really cool if you start off a social club and you and are already got your reputation on the set. You already get to know everybody know you. They function with you, so that's an easy vote. That's a real easy. See, vote. she wants the abs book, man. Don't put my abs book, hey, man. man don't, if you don't knock it off, she wants listen, my abs book. It's your boy, Big Sailor, Big Squid, and I see my man, John Bunch. Black man. Dragon, National President of Black hey, Sailor Nation. Gone, Black Dragon, National President on uh, YouTube. Y'all already know FHO Atlanta GA. 
And your boy Sell. Thank y'all for tuning in for all these. I'm so tired. I'm, yeah, I'm ready to go to bed. You got an hour long drive. Like, I'm glad I you came this yeah, way. Don't worry about it. It's, it's <laughs> <laughs> anyway, man, we love y'all. See y'all, man. Peace. Thank you. Thank you for joining. <laughs>